Today we're going to take a look at something that you probably already have in your home. A Blu-ray player. And if you don't have a Blu-ray player in your home, what are you waiting for? You can rent them really cheap at Redbox. And guess what? They're already showing up at Goodwill stores. That's right. This Blu-ray player, this Sony Blu-ray player, is a Sony, and it's a model BDP-S301. And it's absolutely packed with amazing features. HDMI, AVCHD, DTS, Digital Audio, Dolby Digital Plus, and it also plays compact discs and regular DVDs. So what's so special about this Blu-ray player, other than that sparkling silver emblem on the front? Well, let me ask you guys a trivia question. How old is Blu-ray? Well, from what I found on the official Blu-ray site, Blu-ray was introduced in Japan in 2003 and globally in 2006. So as of this year, the year that I'm making this video, Blu-ray is nine years old, at least for us here in the United States, and probably everybody else too, except those in Japan. I like my quilt, it's showing up very nicely right there, reflecting on the front. But this Blu-ray player here has uh, like a blue panel on the front. I don't know if you can actually see it, but uh, there it is on the front, and it has this cool blue light that lights up right here too, which is kind of cool and some controls on the front. So very minimal controls here. Uh, let's look at the jacks on the back. Turn it around. This Blu-ray player is big. This is a big Blu-ray player. And we'll look inside of it here in a second. But this has some features on it that your Blu-ray player probably doesn't have. Especially if you bought it within, uh, I don't know, the making of this video is 2015. So if you bought it right around 2015, you probably don't have these features. For example, um, a removable power cord. I bet yours doesn't have that. Okay, maybe it does. All right, uh, let's look at the uh, little emblem on the back of here. This is a Sony Blu-ray disc player and uh, made in Japan. I'll bet you yours isn't made in Japan. Yours is probably made in China. We have a HDMI out. We have a video out. So you have not only composite video out, but you have S-video. I'll bet yours doesn't have that. It has component video out, which I'll bet you yours doesn't have that if it was made in the last year or so. And this one also has digital out in both the coaxial and optical formats. And even crazier, look over here. We have regular audio stereo out, but we have distinct 5.1 channel output on this thing. So you can hook this up to an amplifier that doesn't have Dolby Digital decoding and it will decode the audio for you with the built-in decoder. This thing's also a coffee maker. See, it has Java. Of course, I'm only kidding. It doesn't make Java. But as you know, Java is the programming language that all the menus and operations of your Blu-ray player operate in. And of course, it has a big old cooling fan here on the back. So I said that uh, Blu-ray players have been around a while and they're showing up at Goodwill. And they're showing up cheap. I forget how much I paid for this one, but uh, I don't know. It might still be written on it somewhere. You know, it isn't. Oh, yeah, there it is. $30. So, you might even be able to get them cheaper than that. But let's take a look inside. Here is your uh, power module here. So, all of your power uh, supply requirements are all done on this board. And then we're going to move up to the uh, the graphics processor board here. Check out this big old chip on here. Sigma Designs SMP8634LF Secure Media Processor. Isn't that something? That's probably some RAM right there. Maybe some more RAM, video RAM probably. Got some capacitors going across there. None of them are popping open at this point. Got another little processor chip right there. That's probably audio. What does it say? Silicon image something or other. But uh, very nicely clean, clean layout here. All right. Now, this is definitely audio over here. And this is your 5.1 ch channel discrete output 
board here and you can see the jacks for it are all lined up right there. Very nice clean board. If you compare this to like a VCR that was made in the 80s, wires everywhere. But look at this, you just got some ribbon cables, very minimal wiring right here from your power supply. And of course, right over here where everything is made possible, you have like a regular BD Blu-ray drive. It is a, an IDE Blu-ray drive. And if we pull the little ribbon cable off here, and eh, I won't do it. It's just a regular computer Blu-ray drive. See, you got the IDE cable here and you got your 12 and five volt uh, inputs right there. Pretty sweet, huh? So, Basically turning uh, computer hardware into desktop standalone players. Now, one thing that you'll find curious about this Blu-ray player, and it appears it was made in 2007. Do you see that right there? Manufactured May 2007. So at least the Blu-ray drive in here was made in 2007. Let's go ahead and hook it up. And of course with uh, HDMI, you have a minimal of connections. So all we have to do is hook the power up here. And then hook our HDMI up back here, which is right here, plug that in. Now, what makes this thing so unusual and kind of annoying is the fact that this thing is so stinking slow. Now, you would think that with Sony, this thing would just absolutely rock. And their, uh, their PS3s that play Blu-rays, which is what I play my Blu-rays on as a PS3, uh, that thing really rocks as a Blu-ray player, but this is a standalone Blu-ray player. It's really not that great. I'm going to show you why. I have over here a stopwatch, and we're going to time just how long it takes for this thing to turn on and let us put a disc in. All right, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and cheat a little bit, and we'll start the timer, and start, and power. All right, here we go. Timer is ticking. We're up to 10 seconds. Still not ready to put a disc in. Power on. All right, my eject button is right here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it. We're at 27 seconds, 30 seconds. We are still waiting. So go ahead and uh, go and make some popcorn. All right, so we've got uh, something just came up on the display. All right, look at where our timer's at. 48 seconds, and it tells us no disc. So right around 40 or 50 seconds it takes for this thing to boot up and be ready to take a disc. Isn't that amazing? Now I'm going to go ahead and hit eject. Drawer opens up. I've got a copy of Tron here with me. I'm going to go ahead and throw Tron into this disc tray. Now this is Tron Legacy. Or yeah, Tron Legacy. It's the most recent one. All right, so let's time just how fast it takes it for this thing to get ready and display something up on the screen from this disc. So let's go ahead and restart our timer here. I'm going to go ahead and stop it. Reset. So we know it took almost a minute for it to boot up and be ready to go. So let's go ahead and try the disc. Ready? On your mark, get set, go. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Life is, you know, technology is just awful. You know, we're, we're so used to things being so quick and, you know, what's our hurry? What, why, why would we need to wait? What's the, what's the, What's the problem with waiting, you know? So we got loading time here. Excuse my shaky camera work here. Trying my best. We're up to 36 seconds. Still loading. I hope your Blu-ray player at home is faster than this one. Even your cheap little magna box that you got at Walmart is probably faster than this one. 
I know my PS3 is much faster than this, and it's also made by Sony. There we go, we have a logo. Disney Studios, we're at one minute, seven seconds. Don't really count that, because that's not really, I can't like hit a menu or anything yet. Just looking at this uh, flashy Walt Disney Studios picture. Look at this, even Teddy Ruxpin is getting antsy over there. Look at him. He's just like, I can't wait anymore. Oh wait, no, he says it like this. I can't wait anymore. This is taking forever. All right, something's coming up. Something's coming. Here it is. Got that popcorn made yet? Probably manufacture your own cola in the time that it... Uh... All right, there we go. One minute, 50 seconds before actually something started really happening on screen. And you say, well, that's just that disc. Maybe that disc takes forever. Well, that's true. That is that disc, but I think that's a pretty good idea of uh, how long it takes to, uh, to get into one of these players. Well, anyway, we can come over and marvel at the uh, really pretty light here on the front. And I'm going to go ahead and hit stop on the player because, oh, look at that. This operation is prohibited. Really? I can't even stop my own disc? Who programs these things, anyway? Sorry, you cannot stop your own disc. I thought this was a free country. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit eject then, see if I can do that. Took a little bit, but it finally did eject. So, isn't that an amazing feature of a player that takes almost a minute to boot up and nearly two minutes before you can do anything with the disc once you put it in there? That is some outstanding performance. Now, I, I haven't read any reviews on this guy, on this uh, BDP S301, but um, my guess is that probably would reflect what the reviews are for this guy out there. So anyway, I'm not going to bore you any more with this Blu-ray player. It is really pretty on the inside though, isn't it? I mean, just really nice. And this fan hasn't even come on yet. I guess it's, uh, maybe it hasn't gotten hot. But um, Anyway, um, thanks for watching this video. I hope you'll check out the rest of my channel. I'm usually into more vintage stuff, more than nine years old, that's for sure. But you can check out my channel. I got some great old audio and video products that you can check out and learn about, like video CD and a, a DVD recorder. I've got the DVD recorder, this RCA right here on my channel. Oh, look at this. Cannot play this disc. Now it's mad at me. It's mad because I made fun of it. Um, in any case, um, thanks for watching. Share this video with a friend. Subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment down below, especially if you've had any experience with this particular Blu-ray player or any Sony Blu-ray player. And thank you for watching.